Uh, Joe, we talked about Tennessee recruiting about a month ago, maybe less than that, maybe like two or three weeks ago. We're back at it again. Tennessee, Josh Heupel, have at it. Joe, it's really nice when alignment comes together in a program. These type of things start happening. In case you missed it, they got a commitment from David Sanders, the number one offensive tackle in the 2025 class. But, Joe, a couple of weeks before, they got facing Brandon. They've gotten other guys like Hayward and Carson Sneed and Deshaun Brame. And then they get a big flip from Alabama and Jaden Herman. So, Joe, I, I think the biggest question a lot of people had about Josh Heupel was could he go to Tennessee and recruit? Well, buddy, I mean, my man's not doing too bad, has another top 10 class here. We spent a lot of time talking about the entirety of this class, but I, I think that you get a guy like David Sanders, who's the top tackle in the country. That, to me, is the you know the crown jewel on top of everything that you've been doing. It, you have an anchor now by bringing in a guy like this. And from a lot of the recruiting shows that I was listening to that were talking about him, Tennessee wasn't necessarily brought up as the likely contender until it felt like the very end. It's I big, thought, and maybe I'm. Go I was ahead. just gonna say I don't. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm wrong, and, and Elks can correct me. I thought he was gonna end up at Ohio State. Um, yeah, big Ohio State lean. Big Ohio State lean. A lot right. of people thought in the very beginning. Right. Him ending up at Tennessee, though, th this is unprecedented for them to recruit this well, and, and to do it at a key important positions. This is again, we've said it already, and this is. People get upset by making the statement, this is national championship level recruiting. If you want to win a national title, you need to get guys like this, like the number one tackle in the country, top quarterbacks, top receivers. Everything that they're doing is Heupel's doing it at an elite level. So, look, the last time we spoke, I said they got to go out and get offensive linemen, right? Like that was the, the one thing that we talked about their class three weeks ago. We brought up – this exact recruit, and that being uh, David Sanders. Well, they pull it off. But here's another thing, Joe. What do we know that's really happening? And we're not making assumptions when we say this. We have their quarterback right now in Nico, the alignment that it took between Hypel and their collective to get him there. I'm assuming you're doing the same thing with, with uh, Brandon in 2026, and I'm assuming you're doing the same thing with David here in 2025. Draw alignment will make you a winner and, and in reference to the talent. You, you'll get there because Hypel is going to be really good offensively. But what did we talk about in our um, Tennessee deep dive? Joe, it's their front seven that people are like, hey, bro, defensively, there might not be that bad. So, Joe, not only are they recruiting well, they're identifying better players and developing them when they get there, which is a bigger deal than anything. Anybody can get a five-star recruit. Anybody. I, I say anybody. Let me not say anybody. Mm -mm. Majority of top programs, SEC, Big Ten, they can contend yeah. or get five-star kids. Tennessee's got multiple of them here now. It's that, look, hey, man, we just think that James Pierce Jr. is better than everything that you have. Going. We think that he's better, so what? He's a four-star kid. That is where they're winning more than anything. I, I, look, we talked about them in playoff contention. And when you recruit like this, that's what keeps you in that contention year in and year out. Well, that's where the the gap is bridged to what you're talking about is what they were doing leading up to this this massive recruiting class that they are cooking up for 2025 is they, they were finding and identifying the James Pierce Juniors of the world, which is Here's a guy that has every single trait that we want, and we're going to prioritize him, and we're going to get him into the building, and we're going to develop him, and he's going to turn into a potential first overall pick. That's the conversation that James Pierce Jr. is in. To now where you're able to get those five stars and also ID those guys that maybe aren't in the mainstream conversation that are in the middle of the pack that you have high hopes of developing them into becoming future stars. That is how Alabama one that that's how georgia has won that's how especially a team like michigan was able to win they, they built their house on four stars and then they capped it off by bringing in guys like will johnson to to round out the classes that they had i there is just so much potential here for tennessee i, I i'm curious though and this isn't to, to to upset any tennessee fans i'm just curious if all of these guys stay committed 
Well, you got you can do that with everybody because you can do the same thing with Alabama. Joe, a month ago we were talking about, hey man, look, Kalen DeBoer can recruit, and then you could now they go out and flip Jaden Herman from Alabama, the linebacker, this weekend. I mean, you could say that about every single program. You got to keep all of your kids committed. I, I yeah. just don't even talk about that. I'm tr- in recruiting. You got to live in the now because if you presume, then God knows what's going to happen. Joe, let me ask you a, a, a question. I know that this is a Tennessee segment. I know that Nick had some flips here and there sometimes. This is new for this Alabama fan base. And it, you know what it also is? It's new for college football that someone can go into Alabama to a committed kid and flip them. Mm. I, 9.9 times out of 10, when Nick got a commitment, kid wasn't flipping. It, it just it wasn't happening. I know that Alabama has a number two overall class. I get it. But again, it is still something that they were able to go in there and flip somebody. Just saying. I'm not hitting the panic button, but I do agree with you that it is. Oh, hell no. It's a little concerning. overall class. I mean, you can't hit the panic button. For that reason, if they lost Keelan Russell, if they lost their quarterback, I think that we would be hitting the panic button. But you're right. This doesn't feel normal. Most other fan bases, except for maybe Georgia, and Georgia even deals with flips, most other fan bases do deal with this. It is something that Alabama's not really expecting. Alabama was always the one that was coming along, stealing dudes and just flipping them last second to come play for them. I mean, as a Notre Dame fan, I'm still scorned by the Keon Keeley flip that happened a couple years ago. Yeah, that 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 was one of the worst days ever. That's why I call him the, the uh, Darth Vader, man. I mean, because yeah. he would just come up behind you <laughs> and pause and steal your recruits. It, look, here's the thing. You know what we haven't talked about all offseason and it's great because I, I, maybe we shouldn't have. You know what we haven't talked about hardly at all? What is the impact of sa- a Sabinless college football on the field? I think we're seeing it right it now. Mag- I think that – more recruiting parity. That's the that's the answer. I bingo. More recruiting parity, and I think it there's an unknown. Joe, I mean, look, LSU just flipped Cade Phillips. You've had multiple flips. Okay, now Bama's done their fair share, but there there comes a part where it's starting to feel more even at times, right? Like it, it feels more even than what Saban was doing. We don't talk about his impact in leaving the sport and the trickle effect that it causes. Tennessee, LSU, Auburn, nobody was going in there ever and flipping anybody ever. And now you've had three in, what, a month? Like three kids that have been flipped. Auburn gets a pair, Tennessee. That just never happens, and it's not missed upon me that it's happening. Just want to throw that out there. In reference to Tennessee, Joe, I don't ever really remember Josh Heupel being very big with tight ends. Am I wrong here? Offensively, I know they've had some success, but not like trying to get tight ends premier action. Am I wrong? No, no, no not that I can think of. Deshaun Brame and then Carson Sneed. You know what? You know what Heupel's doing in front of our eyes through a recruiting lens. He's innovating. Uh, in in what way? And, and what do you what do you mean by that? I think this brain kid and this Sneed kid, uh, could they be in the line of scrimmage, guys? Yes. I went and lo- watched the Sneed kids film. This dude can catch. This dude can, like, run for a big guy, right? And I'm like, hey, bro, like, I I, I have no – you're going to get – you're going to give him this dude? Like, you're going to give Hypo this guy to play with? That That's where I started coming with, and I'm like – Man, I don't ever really remember him having a big time tight end, but if he's going to get guys that can catch and run like that, then just more weapons, man. More weapons for him. Well, I think this year we're going to kind of get to see more premier tight end usage because Ethan Davis is going to be in his second year. Uh, he was pretty highly sought after. Very good athlete. I think that could kind of be that early exposure to what you're talking about if he does start to implement more of a focus on getting those tight ends involved. This video is sponsored by the online fitness training camp presented by Chris Gates Fitness. When I first started talking about Chris 
about partnering with our show. Not only was I excited to have a fitness sponsor for our pod, but more importantly, when I found out about how he can help people achieve their goals, I was even more bought in because when the football season starts, it is so tough to stay on top of things and also to be able to enjoy yourself on Saturdays when it's game day. With Chris Gates Fitness's online training camp, you're going to be able to effectively stay focused, consistent, burn fat, build muscle, and do it with a like-minded community of individuals working towards the same thing. On top of this, you're going to be able to get direct coaching from Chris and the ability to ask him questions with an access to a live Q&A where you can get direct personalized support from Chris himself. Don't wait any longer. If you're trying to get in shape during this fall and you want to be able to do it with the right support system, head on over to chrisgatesfitness.com slash training camp or click the link in the description and you need to do it today because you can get the first month. Personal training is expensive, folks. The first month for only $10 when you use that code Rafino Joe. Don't wait any longer. Head on over there. Bet Online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for 50% off your first deposit that is a 50 percent welcome bonus bet online where the game starts